All right. Please stand up behind your desk. Behind your bench. Very good. I guess I should keep my mask on. Masks on for singing and chanting. So Bill is ready. Masks on. Ho'o ma kao kao. Hey, aloha, no. Ha, your turn. Hey, aloha, no. E ku'u aina. Aina ama aina. O ka o hiia. E o mai kama aina. Paki pika kokona. E yo, your turn. E yo. E yo mai. Good morning, Sibylla. Are you here? Good morning, Kimo. Are you here? Here. Good. Good morning, Hope. Are you here? Good morning, Koto. Are you here? I am here. Good morning, Arrow. Are you here? I am here. Very good. Good morning, Uncle Steve. Good morning, Mr. Helper. Oh, I forgot. Good morning, First Grade. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Helper. We are here. Now we can say the morning verse. Ready? The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. One. Stone, I saw Stone. Stone, are you here? One. I think he probably needs his, I think he has a little slipper now. He does have a Oh, good. Good morning, Stone. Come on right in and join us when, in, as you're ready. And Stone, you can put your little slip right on your table and I'll collect it in a moment. Thank you. One, one, one for the gold, one for the golden sun. I've got lost. One for the golden sun, two for the night and day, three for me, for here I stand. Strong limbs, warm heart, and a clear, true mind, and four for the season slowly turning. Jump! Five for the stars so brightly burning. Six for the honeycomb, make a six out of chip. And the bees who make the sweet, sweet honey for me. Seven for the seven stars in the sky and the days of the week as they go by. Let me hear you. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Six for the honeycomb and the bees who make the sweet, sweet honey for me. Where are we? Five, five for the stars so brightly burning. Four for the season slowly turning. Three for me, for here I stand. Strong limbs, warm heart, and a clear, true mind. And two for the night and day. One for the golden sun. You may sit down and we'll say our poem. The fairies have never a penny to spend. Actually, you know what? We know this poem well enough. Let's all say it all together. I don't need to go first anymore. And I think I can take off my mask because I'm just speaking now. Ready, set, go. You can take off your mask too, if you like. Or you may leave it on if you want. Ready, set, here we go. The fairies have never a penny to spend. They haven't a thing to put by, but theirs is the dower of bird and flower, and theirs is the earth and the sky. 
And though you should live in a palace of gold or sleep in a dried up ditch, you can never be as poor as the fairies are and never as rich. Since ever and ever the world began, they danced like a ribbon of flame. They have sung their song through the centuries long, and yet it is never the same. And though you be foolish or though you be wise, with hair of silver or gold, you can never be as young as the fairies are and never as old. So uh, let's talk about what day it is now, because that's what we usually do next. The day and the date. Does anyone know what day of the week it is? So we have days of the week. There's a hint behind you on the calendar. We have days of the week, and we also have the date, that's the number, and then we have the month and the year. Complicated. Four different parts, aren't there? So who knows what day of the week it is? It's a school day. Who knows what the what the weekend days are. Which are the weekend days? When you, there's no school. S they both start with S. Sunday and Saturday. Sunday and Saturday. Saturday and Sunday is the weekend. So that means the school week, or the work week, as some people call it, are the weekdays. And we call those mm, what's that? Mm. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. So, which one of those, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which one of those is it? Saturday. It's hard to keep track because you know, well, you should know, Hope, that you come to school on Tuesday and Thursday. So it has to be one of those. My dad said that. Um, there's two more days until the weekend. That's right. Two more days until the weekend. So that's Thursday and Friday, and then comes Saturday. You also come to school Tuesday and Thursday, so Tuesday is the early part and Thursday is the second part. It's hard to keep track of with our crazy schedule that we now have, but that's the way that goes. So I will write. So what day of the week is it? Tuesday or Thursday? It has to be one of the other because you two come that day. I think you come. Your your schedule's been a little bit mixed, and yours. You guys have all had a little bit mixed schedule. So which one is it? You think, Koto? Not sure? Yeah. You want to make it just make a guess? You, you have a half chance of being right, right? You're either going to be right or wrong. 50% chance you're going to be right, 50% chance you'll be wrong. So it's worth taking a guess. It's like flipping a coin, heads or tails. Do you want to guess? No. Hope, do you want to guess? Is it Tuesday or Thursday? Just take a guess, wild guess. Thursday, Thursday is correct. 50% chance of being right. TH makes it for Thursday. Thursday. Say D A Y spells day while I write it. D A Y spells day. And today is only the third day of the new month. It's been November for ever so long, and now it is what month? It starts the D D. December. December. D C E M B E R. What day did I, how many days are we in December? What did I just say? The which day? Look at the calendar. What does the calendar say? I see a one and a two, but I don't see the three yet. Today's the day we'll turn over the three. Please, please, please. December 3rd, I'll put a er and a d. Third, you see my little er d. Third, another little comma. And Crash goes the water bottle, and that's so loud. <laughs> it is that, loud. That what year is it? Year. The last. This is the last month. It's going to be 2020. Next year it'll be 2021. That hurts. Two zero two thousand twenty. All right. I'll say it. Well, you can read it with me. Today is ready. Today is. Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. Happy day. All right. I wonder if we're going to have a visitor now. 
I hear. Oh, one more time. Do that again. Dump, 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 dump. Oh, you did it. Good morning, first grade friend. Good morning, first grade teacher, garden teacher of the I'm first grade. I'm going to give each of you a little leaf, and if it's a little leaf and you rub it, you might smell something. Mm, I can smell it already. Here's a little leaf to rub. Thank you, Coco. Yeah. Oh, okay, rub this little leaf. Here you go, Miss uh, Uncle what do you think you smell? Or maybe I could say, it smells kind of minty. Without even giving it a name and you smell it, what's that like? When you, without you giving it a name, what does it smell like? Mm, yes? It does smell like rosemary, doesn't it? Mm. That's something different because it has oh. rosemary. So, Sibylla and I, when we were in the garden, we were putting our herbs in our mask. Mm, this is an herb with tiny leaves. And most of the herbs have tiny leaves. And we rub those leaves and the smells come out because the oils in the leaf are broken from the cell wall. And they come out into our noses. Does this um, smell make you feel a certain way? Or does it remind you of good things? It smells like... Mmm. Like an oil that you put on your skin oil? Or like oil? What kind of oil? It doesn't matter. You don't have to make a name. This smell of this herb, some people say, makes us feel relaxed. And they often put this smell into a massage oil or shampoo or soap. This is a smell that reminds me of summertime. Mm. When I was when I do garden work and I'm feeling very tired, but I still have to keep going, I will go find this herb and give it a big smell, and I feel a little better. I am um, thinking about yesterday. Does anyone remember what we did yesterday? If you were at home or in the classroom, what did we do yesterday? Did I give you little baggies of soil to feel? And what did we do with that? What did we do with the soil? Did we um, sit on it? No. Did we eat it? We put it somewhere. We put it in a small pot. And we tapped out all the air holes and gave it a little gentle fist bump. And what did we put inside the soil? Cups with the soil. Seeds? Are you feeling sleepy like me? I feel sleepy. What should we do? Let's pretend we're, uh, I would like you to all stand up and pretend you're a plant and the sun is just beginning to reach you in this morning sun. Mm. You are a plant. You remember the moonlight. Mm. And then you're going to reach your plant leaves a little bit up towards the sun. Come, come find me. I want to make some food. And then this, the wind is coming. The wind is blowing through that plant. Okay, here comes the rain. Ooh, that feels good. How about the back of your neck? And all of a sudden, here come all the little insects that want to visit you. Quietly, gently, tap your head. Oh, yeah. Wake up, plant. Oh, yeah. And shake it out. Thank you. That really helped me. I'm glad you joined me on that. Hi, friends at home. So, I have been busy showing you all the plant parts, and I've been running around with materials. So today I'm going to be a little more relaxed and read you another page in the story about our friend Manu. And the title of the book is Manu, the Boy Who Loved Birds. Should I, should I, um, cover, like, should I go back and tell you guys some of the stuff that happened already in the book? Do you remember what happened in this book? Can you tell me anything you remember about the book? He was looking it up? You remembered it very well. Manu is the boy 
and his daddy told him he was named after the O'o bird, and and uh, his long name is is uh, it includes the O'o bird, and that he may live long. And then Manu went to the museum with his friends, and they were looking at the um, feathers of the O'o bird, um, all of the older. Um, uh, the capes, yes, you guys remember. I think so. Or maybe they made um, feathers from another bird look like it. So he went to the museum and he saw the yellow feathers on the capes and the skirts. And his friend sort of kind of teased him and he was a little bit confused. Like, Dad, why did you name me after a bird that was extinct? So they went home at night. And here's a really, I'm going to move my screen a little closer to me and away from our friend here so I can read without my mouse. Okay. Look at that pretty bird. Should I read? I'm going to read that page again. That night, Manu told his father he wanted to know more about O'o birds. Together, they searched the internet and discovered many extraordinary things. Extraordinary things. O'o birds were endemic. Honey eaters found in Hawaii and nowhere else in the world. Endemic means they were found nowhere else in the world. O'o birds flew in big flocks from the sea up to the mountaintops, going where the sucking, going where the flowers bloomed. They had tongues shaped like straws with the brush at the end, sucking nectar from the flowers and they pollinated the flowers as they ate the nectar. O'o birds were tough and feisty and often chased smaller birds away from nectar-filled flowers. O'o birds used to live close to where Manu's family lived now. There was once a native forest where now there were only buildings and roads and lots of people. I'm gonna hold this picture up for my friends in the classroom. Can you see it okay? Mm -hmm. Sarah, do you want to look? Here's a picture of, of the next page. I'm going to read it now. Manu looked carefully at old paintings of O'o birds from the different Hawaiian islands. There were four kinds of O'o. Most had soft, listen to this, this is a nice description. Most of them had soft, glossy, black plumage. That's their feathers as plumage. The Hawaii O'o and Bishop's O'o from Maui and Molokai had fluffy yellow feathers peeking out from under each wing. The O'o from Kauai had yellow feathers at the tops of their legs, like a little pair of shorts. But the Oahu O'o had yellow feathers along the sides of their bodies and black and white striped tail feathers. Many thought, oh, Manu thought his O'o birds were the most beautiful of them all. Manu and his dad found a library of bird songs from all over the world. In between the chirps of crickets and the whistles and tweets of other birds, Manu heard a strange song. It sounded like flutes echoed from outer space. Manu suddenly realized this was the song of the O'o. I want to know what that song is. Should I go like check it out, see if I can find it and bring it back to share with you guys? I would love to know that song. I'm also thinking about maybe the grandparents, our kupuna, our great grandparents, if they actually ever heard about the o'o and then their grandparents could sing the song to them. I wish that like I could remember this because then say, say uh, I had grandkids someday and they said, Grandma or Tutu. What, what did those cokey sounds frown, sound like? What did the cokey frogs sound like? Because we don't have them anymore. Imagine. Could you tell anybody what a cokey sounded like right now? Cookie. Cookie. Let's try it together. Like, let's, do, let's do all the cokies together. One, two, three, go. Cokey, cokey, cokey. Cokey, cokey. Cokey. So these things that we have all around us, we have to read, I feel that if we appreciate them and remember them, then we won't be taking them for granted. Taking them for granted means, ah, it's just a cokey. But what if in 50 years they were gone? We would want to also remember, oh, I remember them. 
I remember when I'm in the garden, up in the garden tent, and I'm trying to get the supplies for the first graders, and all of a sudden a little cookie jumps out. What color is it? Well, you have? Hmm. They're all over the land. Hmm. Are they kind of hiding? They are like squishy balls. Nice descriptions. That's like this, this, the, the description of the bird, the glossy black plumage. Does anybody know what glossy means? Glossy? Yeah, what do you think? Glossy mean like really shiny? Yes, ma'am. Glossy is like shiny. And um, when Stone was talking about the cokey eggs at his house and they were in the log, now, if we built all these buildings, then we wouldn't have any more logs, and then there wouldn't be any more places to lay their eggs. So we always need to remember that the wild places are very special and important, like where the polar bears live, right? So special. And the caribou up in the Arctic, the special, important land for them, and we have to take care of that. But the Arctic's now melting all the time. Yeah, yeah. So we just kept, we were gonna keep remembering our animal friends and do good things for them, okay? Yep, the Arctic is a special, special place. Okay, I'm gonna go. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You were talking about ants a while ago, I remember, weren't you? Talking yes. about ants and their little holes that they make. Everyone stand up, we're gonna do the ant dance. Oh my gosh, I better run. Nope, not fire ants. Front row, come to the, in front of your desk. Back row, stay where you are. Uh, Arrow, you go to that corner kind of near the bathroom, and I will stay here. Stand up, get up right here. Come stand up right now. To the front of your desk. With your mask, thank you. All right, so we're gonna make a circle. Ready, set? You're, you are going to follow Koto, but stay six feet back, okay? Get ready, everybody here. Uncle Steve, are you gonna march with us? Yeah. Okay, you're following me. Stone, you're following Hemo. Don't get too close. It's very easy to get too close. And I want to see good marching. Ready? Practice.
And they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. Knees up. Now how many people are with you? How many ants are with you? Five all together. You plus four more. Oh, the ants go marching five by five. How many? You plus how many? Six. Yep. Seven of them. You plus Six. how many? Six. Oh, the ants go marching seven by seven. Hurrah! We had the calendar, the new calendar. And last time we had cookie and then a half a cookie. And we were very surprised yesterday to see crayons, box of crayons and peanut butter because the first day was peanut butter. And we thought maybe the second day would be what? Peanut, um, jelly. jelly or somebody else thought it could be bread. Somebody else thought maybe it would be almond butter. That's what I was thinking. But instead, we have some different kinds of shapes. A peanut butter jar shape. And it's a similar shape as to like if you look at your water bottle. Look at your water bottle. It has a similar shape. And it's called a cylinder. This one is kind of like a dice, like when you roll a die, you know? It's kind of like a square, but it's not a square, is it? I see rectangular shapes there. So this one's called a rectangular prism. And we don't know what's going to be next. But as you see on the board, I drew a picture of a cylinder. And I wrote the word cylinder. And I drew a cylinder. And I put a one there because we have one on the calendar so far. And there's one of these rectangular prisms. The other shapes that they're going to be there are cubes and sphere. That's a hard one. Sphere. Not spear. Sphere. And oddly enough, when you put these two letters together, P and H, it doesn't say P. It says just exactly like an F. Just exactly like an F sound. Okay, so Koto, since you are close, will you turn over the Thursday? It'll be December 3rd, as you can see. There's one, two, and there'll be a third. Great. And there are grapes there. Grapes. Now, what shape would you say the grapes are in of those choices up there? Round. They are round, but a circle is round, right? Mm -hmm. Is it a circle? Well, 
well, you draw it like a circle, but if you really had it in your hand, it wouldn't be a circle. If someone said, what shape is a grape? And I said, it's a circle. If I cut out a piece of paper that was a circle, that's different, isn't it? That's a circle. When it's a circle, it's a ball. It has a special name, and it's called a sphere. Can you say it again? Sphere. Can you say a sphere is like a ball? Sphere. Sphere. Um, Koto, will you come on up and then give us one mark? Since your mask is already on, give us one mark. Here, where it says sphere. Yeah, we have one cylinder so far, one rectangular prism, and now we have one sphere. All right, we'll keep track and see what happens during the rest of December. All right, different kinds of shapes. Does anyone see another shape in the classroom that is one of those shapes? Like your water bottle was one example, right? Any box, any box you find, any box you find, it's either going to be a rectangular prism or a cube, like an ice cube. But a cube, oh, there's a circle. I see a circle on the top of your water bottle. But that's not one of these, is it? These are shapes that you can't, that, are, that, you, that you wouldn't cut out of a piece of paper. These are shapes that are in the world like they've got, it's called three dimensional. It's not just, it's not, you can't just draw it like that and say it's done. I tried to make this look like a ball. Yeah? Okay, so any box you see around, it's either going to be a cube if it's exactly square on all sides. Let's see how it's not square. That's a, what shape is that, you see? What shape is that? A what? A rectangle. Can everyone see that? That's a rectangle? If you've got a rectangular shape like this one, it's not, it's going to be, it's going to be this shape here, rectangular prism. It sounds like prison, like jail, but it's not. It's prism with an M at the end, instead of an N at the end. All right, that's a little complicated, but if you learn those shapes, then you'll be able to talk about stuff in a more precise way, won't you? I don't know where we're going with this, Uncle Steve. All these shapes. All right, um, so... Raise your hand if you already did this drawing for number five. Me. Okay, so Sibylla maybe didn't do the five drawing yet. You didn't do this one yet? You did. Everyone did the five drawing. Okay, good. And what about the moon maiden? Anyone did not do the moon maiden yet? Raise your hand if you did not do the moon maiden yet. Everyone did the moon maiden? Yes? Okay, great. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to tell you another story. So this story is called Senor Coyote. Who knows what a coyote is? You do? Wait, 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 wait. Raise your hand. You think you have your hand up? You think you know what a coyote is? Well, in the Lion King, they have jackals, I think, which are similar. They're cousins to coyotes, probably. Um, uh, jackals more like in the cat family? Something weird about jackals, I remember. What do you want to say, Stone? Uh, they're like a wild dog. They're like a wild dog, thank you. That's pretty much what they are. They're a little smaller, though. And if, you're, if you live in places, go ahead. like a desert wolf. They do live everywhere though, um, including the desert. And some of them even live in San Francisco. They, they are very, they're like pigeons they can, and rats. They can live anywhere. They don't mind living around people. Wolves, they don't like to live around people. They hide far away. Wildcats, they do not like living around people. But coyotes will, they'll just Sneak right into town and live in some big park. And in San Francisco, there's a big park, and they. Maybe they'll live in a house. No, they might not live in a house. But they're so there's a they're a wild dog, and if you live in places where they live, sometimes at night you'll hear them singing, and it it really does sound kind of like singing there, and you'll hear them talking to each other. 
and sometimes they'll howl and sometimes they'll yip, 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 yip. And they'll make all kinds of noises, kind of like a dog. Sometimes if you hear a dog make a noise, but they're just so much better at it. They're like really good at it. So, and what did you want to say? You, oh, you do, but not here in Hawaii. Yeah. Right, somewhere else. Yeah. When I go to um, a different island, when I stay in a hotel. Uh huh. Um, really. Hmm. Um, so this one is this is a story from Mexico. So I call it Señor Coyote, which means Mister Coyote. Now Señor Coyote. One more comment, and then I'm going to tell the story, and then no comments during the story. Yes. Um, yes, you may. Yes, one more. So, what? Raccoons like to eat trash. Yeah. Yes, they do. They like to dig around in the and trash. Also saw the Another animal that likes to that does not mind living around people sometimes. And it's also saw the Venus. Interesting. I think they also are one of the animals that tend to wash their food sometimes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Um, Senor Coyote was a very clever and yet foolish. He was a trickster and a bit of a noodle head, actually. Sometimes the cleverest ones are also the most foolish, sometimes. So Senor Coyote knew that the dogs like to chase him, knew that the dogs that people have like to try and catch him. But he is too smart for them. He is very, very clever. And so he was running along, running along, but two dogs had decided they were going to catch him. And so they hid where they knew he would probably be passing by. And sure enough, Senor Coyote was walking by, trotting along through the desert forests, through the, that's kind of a, not really desert and forest, but it's through the scrublands, you know, dry forests. And Suddenly, two dogs appeared. Well, he was not too worried. He just took off running in the other direction. And he knew that he could probably outrun them. He was very, very strong and very capable. So he ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. And he heard those dogs coming behind him. And, they could, and he took a turn. And he could hear whether they followed him or not. And he kept on running, kept on running, kept on running on his solid little feet. And he ran and ran and ran and ran. And he was pretty sure he had just about outrun them. And so he slowed down when all of a sudden two other dogs who just happened to be sitting nearby saw him, smelled him, and started chasing him. Well, he had no choice but to run back to the direction that he had been coming from. But he was running now toward two dogs and away from two dogs and didn't quite know which way to turn. Because up one side was a very steep cliff. So he was running along, running along, running along, wondering, what am I going to do? And he could hear with his good ears the dogs coming from behind him, the dogs coming from behind him, and the dogs coming closer in front of him. And as they got closer and closer and closer, he thought of a plan. He thought, well, I'll get real close to the ones that are coming toward me, and then I'll take a quick turn, and I'll just hope that I can find something good. So he took his quick turn and started running straight toward the mountain, hoping against hope that he would find some little path or pass to get up there. Well, he ran and ran and ran and ran, did Senor Coyote, and he suddenly saw something that he thought could save his life. Well, his good ears could hear the dogs coming there and the dogs coming here, and he knew he had nowhere to turn but straight up, and sure enough, he saw a cave. And he looked at that cave and he thought, that's a nice small cave. It might be big enough for those dogs to get into, but I'm hoping it's only big enough for me to squeeze through and they will not be able to follow me. So he ran, he ran, he ran, he ran, he ran. Up, up, up. Up, up, up the hill. Straight, practically straight up. And he was very tired by now. And his tongue was hanging <laughs> out the side of his mouth. He could barely go another step. The dogs were getting tired too, but they were very excited to catch Senor Coyote because they'd been trying to catch him for a very, very long time. Well, his good eyes spied that cave up there and jumped up for it and jumped right in and whew, so lucky those dogs were too big to get inside. 
Well, he went back there and he started laughing to himself. He was so tired. He lay down right down there on the ground, but he was so tired. His legs were so tired. His feet were tired. His whole body was hot and tired. But as he started to recover, he started thinking how great he was, how wonderful a trickster he was that he had gotten away from those, bad, those, those dogs. He was so happy that he started feeling mighty proud of himself. He looked down at his feet and started congratulating himself in various ways. He looked down at his feet and he says, Oh, my little patos, my little feet. I, you have run so hard and so fast. I am so glad you have tough little pads on the bottom and those sharp little uh, nails sticking out there to grip the ground really well and get up that steep, steep hill. Good job, feet. I think you are the best feet ever. And then he thought to himself, oh, but my orejas, my orejas, my ears, my ears did more. Orejas, you did a great job. You could hear those dogs coming this way. You could hear those dogs coming that way. You could hear when they were getting closer and closer so that you would have to run a little bit faster. And lastly, my mi ojos, my eyes, mi ojos are so good. I spotted that cave up there, just the right cave. Good job, ojos, good job, eyes. And then he thought, he looked down at his tail and he said, hola, tail, what good did you do on that trip? What, what, good, what, 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 what purpose did you serve on all? And his tail didn't like the tone of voice that Coyote was using. He felt a little insulted that, that, that Coyote was insulting him. And the tail said, all I did was pull you back and drag you down. All I did was flash my little white underside at those dogs so that they knew exactly where you were. That's what I did, sassy little tail. Well, Coyote said, tail, cola, how could you behave so? What good are you anyway? And he turned around and he bit himself in the tail. And he thought, you know, that's not punishment enough for that bad tail. That bad tail did nothing but weigh me down and get in my way and tell all the dogs where exactly I was. So what he did is he stuck his tail right out the hole of the cave and the dogs were still there. And what they did to him next, we'll leave for another story. But you can imagine. Señor Coyote, rather clever and rather foolish at the same time. Don't you think so? He was bragging and bragging. His feet were bragging, his ears were bragging, his eyes were bragging, and his tail did not like being treated so poorly. All right. So um, I think we will, uh, we will stop it there because we have some other stuff to do in the classroom, but it doesn't, it's not going to be very interesting on TV. So we're going to stop it there.